Hello again, folks. Um, what I'd like to do today is look over a couple of very important examples of um, quadratics and uh, in word problem form. So here's the first one. You want to make a rectangular enclosure for your dogs. You have 100 meters of fencing. What length and width would you give? Would give, sorry, uh, the biggest area. So let's start to look at this. Now, a lot of people, when they first see this question, they're confused because they think with 100 meters of fencing that shouldn't there only be one area that you could make. So let's take a look at these three examples here. Now, 100 meters of fencing is pretty long. So we're going to look numerically at some examples um, that you could do. So let's say a person wanted to make uh, a fenced in area that had five meters along the edge here. Okay. How would you calculate what the other lengths would be? Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that if you put five meters on this side, because it's a rectangle, you also know that there's five meters on this side, right? So let's take a look at the math here. We have 100 meters of fencing. What did we just lose? Well, we used five meters on this side and five meters on this side. So we lost two five meters, which is 10 meters in total, right? And I'm actually gonna drop the unit here just so that we're looking at the numbers. So that's 100 minus 10. which is 90. So you have 90 meters of fencing left. Well, the problem is you've got two sides to fence in. You've got side one up here and side two down here that you still need to fence in. So how do you figure out from 90 what the length of both sides is going to be? Well, the length of both sides are the same because it's a rectangle. So I have to have the same number up here and the same number down here. So what do I do to 90 to split it evenly into two pieces. Well, I'm going to take 90 and divide it by 2. And that gives 45. So I know I'm going to have 45 meters here and 45 meters here. Now, we have a formula for the perimeter of a rectangle, though. So I'm going to show you in the second example. Let's say we now went to double the size on the end here. We went to 10 meters. Okay, so we have a formula for perimeter. Perimeter is two times the length plus two times the width. And we know that our entire perimeter is going to be 100. So I can replace P by 100. But I also know that my width is 10. So I can replace my width by 10. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to isolate the length because we, we need to know the length value. Well, what is the first thing we're going to do? We're going to take this 2 times 10 and we're going to subtract it on the other side. It's adding on this side. Well, technically, sorry, technically we're subtracting it on both sides, but I've been teaching you that there's a trick to that where you can think of it as moving it to the opposite side and doing the opposite operation. Okay, so we're going to subtract 2 times 10 on the other side. So 100 minus 2 times 10 equals 2L. Now, I want you to notice that this and this look very, very similar. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that they are the same. Uh, logically, when we did this guy, we were basically using the formula for perimeter logically. So the formula just helps us uh, understand the logic behind, or not understand it, but do the logic behind the question quicker. But you have to understand what's happening. All right. Now, remember when we divided by 2 right here? We're going to have to do the same thing in a second because we're trying to get L by itself. So because the 2 is multiplying times L, we're going to have to divide by 2. But before we do that, we've got to do the math here. What is 100 minus 2 times 10? Well, 2 times 10 is 20. Right? So it's 100 minus 20, which is 80. And then we divide that by 2 
on both sides and we get a value of L is equal to 40. So we've got a length of 40, a width of 10, and a length of 40. And if you add all those up, you get 100. And if you add all those up, you also get 100. So we've just now gotten two different rectangles with the exact same perimeter. What are their areas? Well, let's calculate the area of the first rectangle. I'm going to call that area 1. Well, what is the formula for area? It's length times width. Well, what is our length? Our length is 45. What is our width? Our width is 5. What is 45 times 5? So I'm just going to take my calculator here off to the side. 45 times 5 is equal to 225. And that would be square meters. Okay, So we have that area for the first rectangle. Now what would the area be for the second rectangle? The second rectangle is length, uh, has a length of 40, has a width of 10, and I don't, need a I don't need a calculator for that. This rectangle has an area of 400 square meters. Wow, that's, that's quite the difference. Same perimeter, completely different area. So the question is asking, what would be the maximum area? Well, let's do a third one just to really understand the, the math involved here. If we go, so if you notice, I went from 5 to 10. So we're going to follow that same pattern. We're going to go to a, a length of 15, uh, sorry, a width of 15. And we're going to be trying to find the length again. Okay, So you could do it in either way. It doesn't matter. All right, But if we follow the formulas, it's always the same thing. So you're taking 100, you're subtracting 2 times 15, and then you're going to divide by 2. And that's going to give you your length. Okay, So we can skip some of these steps now and just go directly to that final thing. So 100 minus 2 times 15. Well, 2 times 15 is 30. 100 minus 30 is 70. 70 divided by 2 is 35. Let's put this n these numbers into a table to help us visualize what's happening here. So I'm just going to add a page. Let's set up our table. So what is the number that we were controlling? We were controlling the width. We started with a width of 5, we went to a width of 10, then to a width of 15. Okay. What was our length? Well, our length we look back, went from 45 to 40 to 35. 45, 40, 35. That looks like it's following a pattern. So most likely our next one's going to be 20 and 30, 25 and 25, 30 and 20. going to make this a little bit longer here. <clears throat> and this is the power of, of patterning, right? We don't have to keep calculating all of them if we see this pattern. Now, what are our areas? And I'll come back to these in a second. I'm wondering if some of you have noticed something happening with this 30 and 20. So our areas, our first one was 225 and 400. And notice all we're doing is multiplying these two numbers together to get our area. Right? So let me use my calculator and find out the other areas here. So 15 times 35 would be the next one. That gives 525. 
Now before I move on, I want you to notice that the change in, uh, in area here is different than the change in area here. This one went up by 125. If I add 125 to 225, I get 350. Okay, so there's a higher change between 225 and 400 than there is between 400 and 25. So it looks like the change is getting smaller as we go up. And the next one is 20 times 30. Now 20 times 30, I don't need a calculator for. It's two times three, which is six. And then it's 20 and 30, which means it's times 10 times 10. So that's 600. 25 times 25, I don't know by heart. So that's 625. And again, notice that the change between 525 and 600, which is 75, which is, is smaller than the change between 600 and 625, which is just 25. So the bigger we go in area, the change between each step is smaller and smaller and smaller. So that sounds like we're getting to a maximum amount. Now at 30 times 20, look at what happened. The area went down. On top of that, it's the exact same area that we had here. Now, why is that? Well, look at the length and width here, and look at the length and width here. They flipped, but they're the same numbers. And if we keep going with our pattern, this one will be 35. What does this one have to be? Well, I don't even have to do the calculation. Look it. It's the exact same thing as that one, just reversed. And then it'll be 40 and 10. Let me erase these. And the last one will be 45 and, and uh, 5, sorry. So when we see patterns like that, we find them very interesting usually. And I mean, mathematics explains those types of patterns. That's the whole point of math. So I know that this is gonna be 525, this is gonna be 400, and this is gonna be 225. Okay, now just because, let's do our first and second differences. So starting from the bottom, here, I'll just do this so I don't confuse anybody. We always start from the bottom, okay? So we're going to do 225 minus 400. 225 minus 400 equals negative 175. And then 400 minus 525, well, uh, that one is negative uh, 75. And then I'm just going to double check that for some reason. I think I'm wrong, but. Oh, sorry, negative 125. Some of you are probably screaming at me there. Uh, this one's the one that's 75, right? So 525 minus 600. Yeah, that one's negative 75. And then 600 minus 625 is negative 25. 625 minus 600. Now, at this point going up, our first differences go positive. 600 minus 525 is 75, and look at what's happening to these numbers now. We're getting the exact same numbers as we got in the bottom, but the positive versions of them. Now our first difference is not constant. Means what? So going back to grade 9 and 10, when your first differences aren't constant, that means this relationship is not linear. So let's do our second differences. What's negative 175 minus negative 125? Now listen to how I said that, right? It's minus 175 or negative 175 minus negative 125. The, a minus minus is going to become a plus there. So. Uh, 175 negative minus 125 negative is 
is equal to negative 50. And if we do these two, we also get negative 50. And if we do these two, we also get negative 50. And that's going to be the case all the way up. And if our second differences are constant, that means this is a quadratic relation. Okay. Now I want to explain this. Uh, now we're gonna we're gonna graph these, and we're gonna use Desmos to do it. Um, Just get that set up here. So, how does a rectangle become a parabola? How does that make sense? So I'm just going to switch over to Desmos and uh, just to show you again how to do a table of values, you click the plus button, plus button, go to table. Now we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to model area versus like the width. We were controlling the width. The width is there for our independent variable. Um, because it just went up by fives. We didn't actually do anything. We just made it go up by fives. Okay, so that's our independent variable. The dependent variable, which is your y values, is what changed when we, when we did that to the width. So the area kept changing as the width was uh, going up by fives. Okay, so um, I'm going to put 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So uh, what's happened here is Desmos has realized that I'm going up by fives, so I don't have to keep typing. So we have to go all the way up to 45. For our parabolas, uh, sorry, for our areas, we have 225, then 400, then 525, then 600, then 625, 600, uh, and then we're going to go back down to 525, and then 400, and then 225. So we can't see anything. But I, I mentioned the question just a couple of seconds ago, how does a rectangle become a parabola? Well, it's because we're not drawing rectangles on the graph. We're drawing the relationship between how the area changes with respect to the width. So the size of the area is being plotted with respect to the width and the size of the area changes following a parabolic or a quadratic, <coughs> excuse me, a quadratic pattern. So, I'm just going to adjust the, uh, um, so we're going to go from 0 to 50 on the x-axis, and we're going to go from Oops, 200 to let's go 650 on the y-axis, and there is our parabola. So these points represent the area of the rectangle. So at 5, we have an area of 225. At 10, we have an area of 400. Now look at what's happening between each height. Notice how each height is getting smaller and smaller and then it starts to get bigger and bigger as it goes down. The difference between each height, I should say. Okay, so the difference between each point in, it decreases as it goes up and increases as it comes down. And that is why we get a parabola representing how the area changes with respect to the width. So let's look at the next example that is also a very important example. Uh, this one is about revenue. So you manage a store 
you usually sell 1,000. Let's say uh, you're selling, I don't know, I put a blank there so you could pick whatever you're interested in. Um, so let's say we're, we're selling pants. I don't know. So I'm going to put pants in here. You usually sell 1,000 pants for $50 each. You notice that if you increase the price by $1 increments, that you sell one less for each increase. What is the maximum revenue? So the first question I have to answer uh, and discuss with you is what is revenue? Revenue is a financial term and it means, um, and I'm starting to wonder if there's supposed to be an E at the end of that word. But anyway, we'll check the spelling later. Um, it means how much money you make selling things. Now there's a big difference between revenue and profit. Profit means how much money you make after you've spent uh, the money you need for your expenses. So expenses for somebody who owns a business could be paying your employees, paying your rent, paying your heat and hydro, um, you know, buying your inventory. So all of that stuff is expenses. But we're not talking about profit here, we're talking about revenue. So revenue is just how much money you make. So how do you calculate revenue? Well, revenue is usually um, the price of what you're selling. And in this case, we're only going to pretend we're selling one thing just to make things a little bit easier, okay? So the price of what you're selling times the number of things you've sold. So you multiply your price times the number of things you've sold. That's your revenue. Now you'll notice that this is very similar to length times width in a, in a format of an equation. Okay, You're multiplying two different things. So let's set up a table here, similar to what we did before. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our um, price here, our number sold here, and our revenue here. Again, I'm not sure if there's an E at the end of that word. I might be messing that up. You can laugh at me in the comments. Um, so what is our original price? So our original price is $50. Our original number sold is 1000. What is our original revenue? Our original revenue is 50,000. So I'm going to rewrite that. Still having trouble. Okay. So what did we say in the question? In the question we said, if we increase the price by a dollar, we sell one less. Okay? So if we increase the price by a dollar, we sell one less. Now what's 51 times 999? I'm just going to do this on my calculator off to the side. Now that gives 50,949, which is bigger than our original revenue. So even though we sold less, because the price is a little bit more expensive, we're actually making more money. Now I don't want to go up by ones because that's going to take probably a long time. Let's go up by tens. Okay, so I'm going to go from 50 to 60. Now, if I'm going from 50 to 60, that means I'm losing 10 sales, okay? So it's, it's one for every dollar. So if I'm going up by 10, I'm losing 10 sales. So that would bring me to 990, right? So what's 60 times 990? I'll do that off to the side. That gives 59,400. We're gonna go up by 10 again which means I'm going to drop by 10. 
70 times 980. It's 68,600. And what I'd like you to do in homework is I'd like you to continue this until you start to see that pattern that we talked about, um, about when it starts to turn over. Now, you might discover that, um, okay, let me explain what I mean by turn over. When these numbers start to go down again, you've, you've crested the, the peak of the parabola or the quadratic, okay? So similar to what we did with the fencing question, when does that happen? What price, how many you're selling, and what would be your maximum revenue? So I'd like you to try to figure that out. Now, you might notice that going up by tens is too slow. So if you have to, you can go start going up by 20s or you can start going up by 50s. Um, you know, I, I did start with a thousand, so I'm not sure exactly what's gonna happen. Now, increasing our price of our pants by um, $50, it might be that my numbers that I chose were a little bit off at the very beginning, folks. Okay, don't worry about that. Um, but just try to see if you can get it to, to crest and start to come back down. Okay, so you might have already noticed that the change um, between the 1 and the 5 and the, uh, or sorry, the 50 and the 60 and the 60 and the 70 is a little bit smaller. Okay, so keep going and see what you can find out. And that is uh, going to be your homework for tonight, and that is it for today's lesson. So uh, two very important examples, um, even though they're completely different topics, they're very, very similar, and both of them represent uh, quadratic relationships when you actually uh, look into them. So uh, have a great day, and we'll talk to you uh, next time.